And all eyes are still watching the developments in the war in Ukraine because it affects not only the ASEAN region, but the whole world. Russian President Vladimir Putin told the visiting UN chief that he still had hope for negotiations to end the conflict in Ukraine. Let's listen in. Несмотря на то, что идет и военная операция, мы тем не менее все-таки рассчитываем на то, что нам удастся достичь договоренности на дипломатическом треке. Мы ведем переговоры, не отказываемся от них. Sitting across from Gutierrez at a long table at the Kremlin, Putin said efforts at talks with Ukraine had been derailed by claims of atrocities committed by Russian forces in the town of Bucha outside Kiev. President Putin told Gutierrez he was aware of your concerns about Russia's military operation in Ukraine and ready to discuss it, but blamed the turmoil in the country on an anti-state coup that overturned a pro-Russian president in 2014. Mr. Gutierrez reiterated his call from an earlier meeting with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov for Moscow and Kiev to work together with the UN to set up aid and evacuation corridors to help civilians in Ukraine. And we have more developments in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Russia suspending gas shipments to Poland and Bulgaria as their forces step up their assault on eastern Ukraine. Take a look. Fighting continued to rage across Ukraine's east. Kiev's defense ministry said with Russia shelling Kharkiv city and its troops launching an offensive on the town of Barvinkov. Russia said it had carried out high precision missile strikes against 32 Ukrainian military targets, including four ammunition depots on Tuesday. It also launched airstrikes against 33 targets, as well as 100 artillery and rocket strikes. In the south, two Russian missiles struck the industrial city of Zaporizhia, which has welcomed many civilians fleeing Mariupol, according to regional authorities. Mariupol's mayor, meanwhile, said a third mass grave was discovered and that locals are being forced to bury bodies in exchange for food and water. And also today, Russia took actions outside Ukraine. It cut off natural gas deliveries to Poland after Poland refused to pay Russia's demand in to pay to Russia's demand to pay in rubles. Poland, like much of Europe, is still buying oil and gas from Russia and has been sending Ukraine weapons. Germany, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met with defense officials from 40 countries, including NATO members and also countries such as Israel, Japan, and Australia, pushing for more military support for Ukraine. Let's watch this. And I wanted to especially welcome a major decision by our German host, as uh, Minister Lombrecht announced just today that Germany will send Ukraine some 50 Cheetah anti-aircraft systems. And yesterday, of course, the British government announced that it would provide Ukraine with additional anti-aircraft capabilities as well. And today, Canada announced that it will send Ukraine eight armored vehicles. And so that's important progress. We're seeing more every day. And I applaud all the countries that have risen and are rising to meet this demand. But we don't have any time to waste. The briefings lit today laid out clearly why the coming weeks will be so crucial for Ukraine. So we've got to move at the speed of war. Когда действительно риски весьма и весьма существенные, очень не хотелось бы, чтобы эти риски искусственно раздувались, а желающих таких немало. Опасность серьезная, она реальна, ее нельзя недооценивать. That was Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warning against provoking World War III. The U.S. has been rushing more weaponry to Ukraine and said the assistance from Western allies is making a difference in the two-month-old war. Lavrov accused Ukrainian leaders of provoking Russia by asking NATO to become involved in the conflict. NATO has effectively entered into a war with Russia 
through proxies and is arming those proxies, he said. NATO forces are pouring oil on the fire, Lavrov said, according to a transcript on the Russian Foreign Ministry's website.